Hi, this is the second part of um, Women in Islam, Women's Rights, and um, the Liberation of Women in Islam. So now I'm going to talk about bearing witness because this is another, um, uh, you know, thing the haters like to throw out, and they don't like to mention all of this, the the you know, the the concept. Um. So here we have bearing witness in Islam. Now, um, in the Quran and the Bible, it's it's a little bit different. Um, it is true that the Quran has instructed the believers dealing in financial transactions to get two male witnesses and one male and two female witnesses. So basically, um, as far as business transactions go, um, two females is equal to one male for, um, for a testimony. However, it is also true that the Quran in other situations accepts the testimony of a woman as equal to that of a man. In fact, the woman's testimony can even invalidate the man's. If a man accuses his wife of being unchaste, he is required by the Quran to swear five times as evidence of his wife's guilt. If the wife denies and swears similarity five times, she is not considered guilty, and in either case the marriage is dissolved. On the other hand, women were not allowed to bear witness in early Jewish society. The rabbis counted women's not being able to wear witness, not being able to bear witness among the nine curses inflicted upon all women because of the fall of Eve. And in the first part, I did talk about that. So, um, if you want to check that out, you know, you can check it out. So, let's see here. Okay. Alright, adultery. Adultery is considered a sin in all religions. <laughs> That's kind of funny since it's so prevalent nowadays. But um, Islam also equally punishes both the adulterer and the adulteress. However, the Quranic definition of adultery is very different from the biblical definition. Adultery, according to the Quran, is the involvement of a married man or a married woman. The Bible only considers the extramarital affair of a married woman as adultery. If a man is found sleeping with another man's wife, both the man who slept with her and the woman must die. You must purge the evil from Israel. That's in Deuteronomy 22.22. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, both the adulterer and the adulteress must be put to death. Leviticus 2010. Okay. I would also like to say, since we're talking about that, um, is that um, to be considered guilty of adultery in Islam, you have to... Um, you have to have four witnesses and the four witnesses have to actually be watching this this uh, you know this act um, so um, that that's one thing and another thing is um, you know it's, it's different if someone um, like repents from this I don't know I, I don't know all the the fiqh about it or the the legislative law, but uh, anyway, let's uh, let's see. Let's keep going here. Wives' property. The three religions share an unshakable belief in the importance of marriage and family life. 
They also agree on the leadership of the husband over the family. Nevertheless, blatant differences do exist among the three religions. Hmm. All right. Sorry, guys, it's just a little bit long. Okay, so we're going to talk about female inheritance. There is no female inheritance in Islam. Um, not only that, but um, when someone gets married, they can't get married unless they're given their consent. So if, if someone's dad wants them to get married... Um, it's it, the, the marriage is not considered valid until the daughter, um, until she, um, uh, you know, says yes to this marriage or consent. All right, so I'll uh, be talking about the third uh, part. So just continue.